I'm going to hand over to Lucinda now, who is going to take us through <coughs> first of one of the basic exercises that we use to ask the horses to work on the quality of the canter, because the quality of the canter and the quality of the paces is what gets you the extra marks in dressage and gets you the clear rounds in the show jumping and the cross country. You must have the horses with good quality paces. And uh, we've got two sets of poles, some long poles up that end to get the horses to open up in the canter, and some short poles down this end to ask the horses to really sit and collect. And the good thing about the poles is it keeps the hind legs active. Lucinda. Oh, good, it's my turn, is it? <laughs> so, what, a um, couple of things. Oh, that's a bit of a funny angle, that pole. Um, I love, to, we do a lot of training with our working pupils, our grooms. They all ride our horses, and we train them on our horses so that when we go away, our horses can be really well worked. Danny came to us when she was 14. Um, she's now 17, and she really rode ponies when she came. She would be perfectly capable of coming in here and doing this exercise. Three or four things for doing the poles to, in, to encourage the horse's canter, because jumping is all about the quality of canter. You can work on the straightness, you can work on the suppleness, um, but you've also got to work on the lift of the canter, so the horse is more engaged. Clayton's horse has actually taken quite a long time to be able to canter over short poles, and we will get these poles really quite short. Um, because you can see he's got a very expressive, quite open canter, and his back legs need to try to jump together quicker. Clayton's cheating a little bit. He's going on the outside where it's a bit easier. But gradually, as he warms up, he will get you know, more and more tight to them. And we also gradually raise the outside of the poles with the little jump stands as well, which makes them really work hard. But we can't do everything in one day. So the next thing, how do you see your stride to the pole? Well, I was very lucky. I could see a stride from as long ago as I can remember, probably eight or nine years old. I don't know why. There are a lot of things I can't do. I can't sing. I'm not very good at drawing, but I could see a stride. And the best thing to do is to count the horse's canter stride. So every time it's front leg, inside front leg hits the ground. I do it with the front leg hit, hitting the ground. <clears throat> you count the horse's canter. So Clayton's canter is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. You can see that horse, he actually slows down. And that's how he finds it easier to shorten his stride. You get some, a little short, you know, short striding horse, um, like Hedley Britannia, for instance. She doesn't come slower. She just goes shorter and quicker, uh, which is ideal for certain things, um, but not obviously ideal for, for the extended poles where she has to elevate over them. The next thing Clayton's doing is he's focusing on the front rail, exactly where the horse's front legs are going to go over. And he's focusing on that from way out. It's no different than coming to a fence. So I'm going to canter around now. Danny, we can go shorter again, please. Um, <clears throat> and the idea is to train the horses and the riders to shorten up the canter, come medium canter down the long side, and then go around these wider poles. And you gradually get them bigger and bigger and bigger, and shorter and shorter and shorter. And it's quite interesting to see this horse again. You know, he'd come from a riding school in Germany, ridden by, uh, well, everybody. And he used to take all the big fat German men out for hacks at the weekends. So he couldn't, he was pretty uh, oblivious to having to shorten his stride. Now, when I was talking there, I didn't actually count, but I could, <coughs> the, it's just a matter of focusing and practicing, and this is something you can all do at home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. Danny, shorter again. Let's be brave now. Then I'm going to go extended canter. Get the horse between the hand and the leg. We can make these way longer up here. I'll get Danny right up there to get those longer. So I'm really extending. And then suddenly, Danny's going to be getting there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can go shorter again while you're here. <laughs> oh, good boy. <clears throat> and this horse couldn't shorten um, when we first got him. He was like, you've got to be serious here. And uh, good boy. And it's such good work for suppling them, for making them submissive, for making them bending, Ooh. and teaching them good changes. Now I press, and I'm looking and I'm counting. Oh, I think that was light, wasn't it? <clears throat> Should we go one more short and just see if we can do it? Oh. So all the way down here, I'm looking at that red pole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you see how the rhythm is just built up? Oh, quick, Danny. <laughs> Might do a little. Oh, gee, she's being a bit nasty here, isn't she? Hey. Gosh, this is where I want to have Brit. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh. <clears throat> and it's, it is incredible. You think it's going to be easy, but I guarantee you, you will miss left, right, and centre. The horses will go disunited. The horses won't even stay in the centre of the poles. And it takes a lot of training to get these horses to go like this. I promise you. <clears throat> and we love it. The, so the reward of coming out and doing this. And for our girls and boys at home, we're not there all the time. And they can just set up these poles and without damaging the horses or having to jump jumps all the time, they can practice seeing their strides. The other thing you can do is just put the poles willy-nilly around the arena. You can actually build a course of, of jumps without the jump stands and just build a course and practice riding your strides, riding your distances. And all it is, is practice, providing you've got the horse between your hand and your leg. You can make it go, you can make it woe, you can keep it straight. It's submissive, it's listening, it's supple enough. And when, if I had come out straight away and expected this horse to do that, he probably would have struggled. And so therefore it's always a build up. You know, don't expect the horse to come out and just go straight and do the most difficult thing. You wouldn't expect a horse to come out and jump a metre 40 straight away. You'd always build up to it. Yeah, so I think the warning is for you guys out there that may want to try this, just to start very simple with one pole. I'm hot. And make, make it a clear canter over one pole, and then when that's good working, add a second pole and start with... And be imaginative. The whole time when you're training, be imaginative with the poles. Um, as Cinder said, you can have a little course of poles and just make sure you get the good, good stride to the poles the whole time. And uh, yeah, build up to this exercise because it is actually phys quite physically de demanding. My little horse here, I can feel his heart having a little pound. I don't know if that's because he's never seen quite so many people before or... Uh, but I th I'm pretty sure that it's actually, this is very physically demanding work for the horses. So always remember to be mindful of um, how they're feeling. When we, um, when we do these bowls, I mentioned before that we do actually um, raise the outside, but only literally to, well, smaller than these jumps. And that you wouldn't do them as short. They would be the distance like um, nine foot, I suppose, like a normal schooling little bounce. I mean, I do all my walking from, uh, all my distance just from, 
feel, look, and, and just walking the strides. But if you see these, these could be worked up to about four of your strides. Not four meters, but just four good, bold walking strides. And these are nearly on one and a half. You can imagine the difference for the horse having to extend its stride and shorten it. Obviously, depending on the horse, a horse like this, these two need to do more of that than more of that. They find that easy. But something that's short striding, and I have to use um, Brit as an example, she, I have to really build her up for this. That's so simple for her. But I have to, I have to motor around here. And, the, and the, the thing is, we do this and dress our saddles as well. It doesn't have to be only for jumping. I mean, how boring is it doing dressage through the winter every day on a horse that actually isn't that scintillating to ride? Our event horses are event horses because they're not good enough for dressage, and they're event horses because they're not good enough as show jumpers. So we have to make our horses as um, strong physically and mentally in three different phases. And the winter time is time for practice and doing the things, not killing them by jumping them too much. But you as riders and trainers, work clever, be smart, be clever how you, how you train your riders and train your horses. Be inventive, there's all sorts of things. Luckily we're only here for two days, otherwise you'll get a whole fill of it.